OK, welcome to our presentation today. Uh, my name is Patrick lange -Hanberg. I'm working at um, Trioptics. Um, I'm the division manager for the optics manufacturing solution. And uh, today I would like to give a presentation on IR optics um, with the title of efficient testing throughout the manufacturing process. Um, I would like to start um, with a quick um, motivation or, or overview about the uh, markets and applications uh, we as Traoptics are working in. Uh, we cover a huge variety of different applic applications starting from optics manufacturing through automotive solutions, applications in smartphones, uh, microhistography, uh, medical technology, uh, mechanical engineering. Um, but in this today's presentation, I would like to focus on um, to focus on optics manufacturing um, here, um, especially the glass and lens production mounting techniques, and also with the focus um, application in security and aviation, in particular here infrared systems. Okay, if we look at the manufacturing process of IR lens assemblies, um, there are very common metrology questions come up, um, starting with the general question, uh, which parameter can be measured, how accurate can this um, parameter be measured, and when within the um, manufacturing process should we measure and control um, these parameters? And also, do I the question, how do I measure this? Do I need dedicated IR metrology for this? Or is this something we can uh, solve with other techniques? And um, what, what is the typical efficient process flow? And here, I would like to give a presentation really along the manufacturing process. Um, the manufacturing process, very um, uh, general look at view at the manufacturing process. We have um, several steps. The first step is typically we start with a qualification of the single lens element. Um, we make a general um, a verification of incoming parts or of um, machine just machine parts. Um, then when these par parts are um, qualified, then we can put them together into lens assemble, assemblies that are bonded, um, controlling geo geometrical parameters, like positioning parameters of the um, lens elements. Then we use these lens systems in our final inspection, where we look then really at the outcome, at the image quality of such, um, such an assembly. Um, in the good case, we pass this final inspection because the image quality fulfills our expectations. In the in the other case, um, when we fail, we have to go uh, into the troubleshooting. We have to make another iteration where we start with an in-depth optomechanical analysis of the assembly, um, and then we go back to the to the um, assembling process of this um, of this lens. Um, when we know maybe that one lens is maybe a bit loose, it's a bit off, it's a bit, uh, uh, it's incorrect, maybe it, it's uh, it's an incorrect um, lens element that is used um, in that assembly. Uh, we have to make another iteration in the bonding process before we come to the final inspection again, and hopefully we pass this time. So I would like to, um, give this presentation along this manufacturing process, starting with the single lens elements, coming to the bonding and the final inspection, and also later on this in-depth analysis. Okay, let's start on the single element um, level. The um, very typical, there the are many parameters that um, can be controlled on the, on the single component level such as the center thickness, radius of curvature, lens element centration. All of these parameters are um, uh, aspects that are tested for these lenses. Here, I would like to focus on the lens element centration. Um, lens element centration 
um, to have a common understanding about what um, do we mean by um, the centration of a single lens. Let's have a look at a at the example I took from the ISO standard. Um, it's a um, double-sided spherical single lens, and the centration here it's specified here. It is um, it's parameter four. It's specified to 0.5 minutes. Um, that's the um, tolerance in terms of centration for the top surface here in this case, and top surface um, here of it's 0.5 minutes um, of the center of curvature of that spherical surface, which is here, um, with respect to the given reference axis. It's th this reference axis is a construction of datum A. Datum A, it's the bottom sphere here. Um, so we have a second center of curvature that uh, contributes. And also we have the outer diameter B here, where we need to look at the center of that diameter. So these two features, they represent our uh, reference axis. And then we measure um, the shift or the tilt um, of the corresponding um, surface axis with respect to that reference. Okay, so that's the parameter we're interested in and how can we um, approach this parameter? Um, there are two um, very typical approaches. Um, one is the approach of using an autocollimation stand with a so-called lens rotation device. So here on this lens rotation device, um, when we look at the single element, um, we take this lens and we turn this on its bottom surface and against its diameter. In this case, in, in, in this configuration, the center of the diameter and the center of curvature, they are fixed in, in space and when we then um, um, attach a driving wheel from the side, then the lens rotates in itself. And this means we um, um, yeah, have the reference that we would like to use in our analysis directly as a rotation axis, and we measure the decentration within, with um, uh, the help of a focusing autocollimator by looking into the top surface. Um, um, when we focus into the center of curvature, we directly can measure the runout, so the the distance of that uh, center of curvature with respect to the reference axis expressed in shift values or in surface tilt values. Um, this is something where we measure in reflection on the top surface here. This approach can be used independent from the uh, transmission properties of the lens, so we can directly do this. Um, Preferably with visible light, we do not need to measure in the infrared in this case. Um, so we can use a very standard visible high resolution autocollimator solution to reach something like an accuracy of 0.1 micron. Um, this approach is a bit critical when it comes uh, to very delicate IR lens materials, um, especially especially when these materials are um, come with a sensitive coating, then maybe you do you may uh, try to avoid the rotation on a on a on a ring chuck on this on this evacuated cup that we have here. And rather you would use a different approach. And for this um, we have a second option. Um, instead of using um, this lens rotation device, we use um, a dual autocollimation stand. It's an optocentric dual system in this case that we use, which is equipped with a um, distance sensor, in this case a chromatic confocal distance sensor. And in this configuration, we do not rotate the lens in itself, but we rotate the lens on a, a separate spindle axis, so some an, an instrument axis. And then we measure all these three features uh, with respect to that spindle axis. So we then we know where do these three features locate in space with respect to the reference of uh, rotation axis, and then we do some calculation in order to get 
the error of the one feature with respect to the two, two others. So this is the preferred um, approach for delicate IR lens materials. And here again, we can um, use visible autocollimators um, for when we work in reflection mode, um, we use a dual stand. Dual uh, stand means we have one autocollimator coming from the top to measure the top surface in reflection, and we have a second autocollimator coming from below to capture the bottom center of curvature. And in this case, we can use this uh, very precise, easy to handle, and um, um, and accurate visible autocollimators um, in order to get this inner centering error of the single element. Um, in this configuration, we use this distance sensor um, to get the center of the diameter. There are different approaches, uh, different solutions for the distance sensors. Uh, starting with tactile solutions, also um, using chromatic confocal, like non-contact distance sensor, depending on um, the application. Okay, so this is what I wanted to um, show you on the qualification of the single lens elements. So let's now talk about the bonding of lens systems. So the typical parameters that have to be controlled during the bonding process, it's um, well, we have to make sure that all the lenses are correct, uh, correctly positioned along the optical axis, so that all the lenses um, are uh, positioned in the with the correct spacers, for example, um, or in the correct uh, air spacing in between these lenses. Um, this is one parameter to control. We also do have solutions for this, but now let's talk about lens alignment concept. Um, so one um, very classical stacking process um, I would like to mention here, if you uh, look at the stacking of lens assemblies, um, the typical approach is you take your, you take your housing, you drew your housing so that it's aligned to a spindle axis, then you insert lens by lens, um, starting with the bottommost lens. Um, here, the, in this um, orientation, the bottom surface rests on a seat, and that seat kind of automatically aligns the bottom lens surface, so we don't need to take care of that surface. And the top surface here in this case is directly accessible from the top, again, with visible light here in this case, and we can align that surface. Um, then we um, insert the next lens. Maybe this has a different um, seat geometry here. In this case, it has a plano uh, contact site on the um, on the second surface. And um, so we perform a pure shift motion here. Now we can do this either either automated. We have a variety of um, automated solution for this, but also you can do this manually by by tapping um, the lens to its correct position. And this is how we typically put together a, a lens assembly. And here in, in, in this process, we rely on the bottom surface is correctly positioned by, the, by its seat. So we only no, need to look at the top surface. And so standard visible um, equipment is fully sufficient. And we can do this with very high accuracy. And it's very easy to handle. We can avoid the um, a more, um, more expensive IR equipment. And it's a very economic solution. OK, now let's come to the final inspection, the, uh, having a look at the image quality. There's a variety of um, parameters that can be used to quantify the image quality. One, one very common parameter is to have a look at the modulation transfer function. Modulation transfer function, this is something which is um, illustrated here with the example of a um, three bar chart. When you look at the these three uh, uh, um, well contrasted bars here um, that 
have different frequency frequencies when these bars are then imaged by a, by a, by a lens um, you will see a degradation in the in the contrast in the kind of in the vis visibility um, and this degradation or this loss in the contrast also depends on the frequency so the higher frequency have a also a higher loss in the contrast and this is something that can be used to quantify um, the performance of the lens. Um, if we look at these three single lines, we get three discrete uh, values for the um, contrast transfer or the, the, the modulation transfer. Um, this is a very classical, uh, very like old fashioned approach to quantify the image um, quality image quality instead nowadays we use other techniques such as a slanted edge or as a uh, uh, as a crosshair analysis or a, or a line analysis um, and in, in this way we get the full mtf um, distribution over the frequencies and then you can um, use this as an um, parameter for the analysis if you compare this to your expected nominal um, uh, MTF curve. Other parameters that also have an, have an impact on the, on the uh, image quality and can be analyzed based on these MTF results are EFL, distortion, field curvature, and astigmatism, and also furthermore. The typical configuration that we have here um, if you set up such a device, um, we have a, uh, um, an arrangement that works in transmission. So we have typically we have a um, infinite finite conjugate system. So we have a collimated light coming from infinity that um, is transmitted by your um, sample lens and then analyzed by our image analyzer. As we, as we work in transmission in this configuration, we cannot use um, this equipment here, so we need to have dedicated IR solutions. Um, for this, we have different um, solutions available, starting with a short wavelength uh, infrareds. Um, we also have solutions for mid-wave and long-wave infrared, really dedicated at the application that you have here. Um, depending on the on your configuration or on your kind of analysis that you would like to carry out, you could use either broadband illumination or narrowband illumination when you combine these broad, such broadband light sources with um, corresponding narrowband filters. Um, and uh, one thing I would like to add, um, you do not typically you do not only measure along the axis, but you also measure um, in the field. So you have to move that collimator that projects the light from the infinity to different object angles, and then you look at the image at different corresponding image height, and then you also get information: how does the MTF change? not only on the axis, but also in the field. Typical setup here um, is something you see here on the on the left side. It's an Image Master HR um, that we we provide. Here, depending on the application, either we have a, a mirror or lens collimator um, that project the target from infinity and then um, we go through our lens that should be analyzed and then we look at um, the resulting image with a sensor array. Um, here we use this array concept, even though it's a slightly higher investment than using a, um, uh, a single scanning photodiode, um, because it's much faster, much easier to handle and also um, um, it's also less um, operator dependent and you need to have less experienced um, staff 
that operates this whole process. Um, it's also important that we have different mechanical solutions um, that move the um, the object and the image side also to its corresponding positions because this is what is analyzed later on. Um, and also we have a, a, a sample holder that can be rotated to any azimuth orientation so that you can not only get the information from one section but also from the from the full uh, field. Okay, so the Image Master HR, I already mentioned this, it's a very um, easy to operate and flexible solution um, that um, helps us to get really accurate results. And based on these accurate re results of the MTF analysis, we can uh, do the pass fail decision um, in the inspection of the parts. So what do we do if we fail in the image uh, inspection? Okay, then we have to find the problem. So we have to perform an out-of-spec image quality analysis. So how do we do this? We we want to want to see, want to completely characterize is everything in its correct position in the assembly. So do we have uh, additional D centers um, um, that were not taken into account in that lens assembly? For example, the bottom surface. So is the seat not maybe not very precise so that means do these parameters the parameters that we dot, did not really actively control are these the result of um, of the problems and also the the air spacings uh, center thicknesses all of these parameters can be controlled but here we need to have a centration te test stand that operates in the infrared because we need to look into our assembly now it's not um, no more possible to work in reflection geometry only. Um, here, we, what we can offer here, it's combined IR and VIS measurement stands. Um, here, we have it always combined because it's, for many applications, it's very useful to have a visible light source because it's easy to, easy to handle, highly accurate. For it's um, the light source of, of choice for the outer surfaces. And if you want to look into the inner surfaces, you need to have something that can um, penetrate through the medium. So we need MWIR or LWIR light sources. Here you can see the specification because of the longer wavelengths and also the, the larger um, kind of pixel size um, of the sensor. We do not reach the same accuracy level as we have in the visible, but still far below one micron for these um, um, systems. And this helps us also to um, make, an, make an in-depth analysis on the one side after the um, inspection, but also can be used for more advanced alignment strategies. Um, if you, for example, if you want to avoid to to align everything with respect to the rotation axis, but maybe you would like to perform a more direct lens to lens alignment, or you would like to make an alignment of one lens to another lens, or you want to compensate some um, decentration errors of the one lens by another lens. Um, all of these strategies are available with these systems. And um, yeah, one more thing. Um, so I mentioned um, we have solutions in the MWIR and LWIR. Here, the important thing for us is not the design wavelengths, but it's the um, transmission of the material, material including the coating. Um, so it's um, um, yeah, something that helps you with, with the decision what you're preferred me um, measurement wavelengths sh should be. Uh, one last last thing I would like to mention is the measurement of air spacings and center thicknesses. Um, this is also very important um, to quantify the, the distances inside of an assembly. Um, here we have 
also options available that are mainly um, um, addressed to the visible systems. Here we have a um, wavelength in the, in, the, in the short wavelength range, 1.3 micron as a standard wavelength with a very high accuracy of 0.15 micron and a dual band system that also that adds to that wavelength um, a second uh, light source that can penetrate um, through all IR materials, including germanium. And this is something which is really unique uh, for our, um, our test stands. And uh, it's a very useful tool um, to build precise assemblies. Okay, so this is the whole um, manufacturing processes I wanted to um, illustrate to you. Um, please um, uh, um, I, I wanted to wanted to to show you that we have solutions all along that process. I didn't go really into detail of all the different process steps, but um, you should know that trioptics support the whole manufacturing process of IR lens assemblies. If you have further questions, please approach us, um, get in, in contact to us, and we are very happy um, to answer your questions, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. <laughs>